Hi there, Sam Conlog. Um, just thought I would go over a little bit, a little progress on a rig and a nitrous viewport, all in one shot. Um, anyway, here's the here's a little test animation um, of the rig. So we've got a little short roll up, a little body rock, um, auto wheel rotation going on. I don't know if you can see it there. You can see the treads moving. And actually the rig setup is based on a little refresher course I did yesterday. Um, Stuart Jones has a pretty decent advanced rigging, car rigging course on digital tutors. If anybody's interested in checking those out, it's definitely worth it. Um, if you haven't done any car rigging in a while, which I hadn't. Uh, I think last time I did it, I was using Madcar, which kind of hides everything from you, um, which is a great tool too. But uh, this one I wanted to do manually. Uh, but anyway, so let's take a look at the controllers. Oh, actually, before that, by the way, um, pretty cool real time performance out of Nitrous with the refle reflections and stuff. So this is just an HDRI. Uh, if we go in perspective mode here and walk around a little bit, where's the car? There it is. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's no ground plane. It's not, you know, totally breaks the relationship with the ground. But we're just in an environment here. Uh, HDRI. Take a look at the car. Really great real time. Um, not real reflections. I mean, if I drop a another object in here, it's not going to reflect in the car. But for you know, just getting a sense of lines and making sure your polys and everything are nice and smooth. I mean. Usually in the viewport, it's a pain in the butt uh, to get a good sense of if you've got any bad polys going on, making weird warps or something, dents. Um, so this gives you a sense of you know really what your surfaces are going to look like if, if you're dealing with something like a car or really any product visualization. Um, you don't get glossies, so you know my wheels are as shiny as the car, but whatever, yeah, it's still pretty cool. Um, and the fact that this all plays back. Um, real time any jagginess that you might see in playback here of the video is going to be from my video capture software not from uh, Max because Nitrous is, is playing this back totally smooth um, actually let's turn on the statistics so that you can see that yeah I mean look at these frame rates it's great uh, and this isn't with a quadro or anything this is just a uh, NVIDIA 680 But anyway, yeah, so there's our little move. Um, and what's going on for controllers and whatnot, let's shut off the car for a second. Uh, there's the control rig. Um, here's the spline showing us the direction. We've also got some helpers. Those are, you know, we don't use those to control the rig itself, uh, or at least we don't. An animator won't affect those. Um, those get hidden, hidden away. Um, Anyway, here's the rig itself, which again is pretty much based off of the tutorial. Um, I'm going to go back through and eventually when I've got some time, because this is a personal project, so I'm just kind of going through it as I have time. Um, some of this could be scripted, uh, like the body roll and, and stuff. But anyway, let's turn the car back on, see what things do. So here's our steering, straight ahead, steering controller. Um, it's also independent, so if you wanted a little toe in or something, um, these wheels can be independently controlled that way. Um, obviously independent rotation, but what I'm doing right here is, is using an expression um, to roll those wheels based on the percentage along the path. So if you've got the uh, spline distance um, plus the percentage at which um, your path constraint is at, you can basically calculate out where this should be rolled. Uh, you need the radius of the wheel obviously, so um, that's all expression based, but a nice easy way uh, the only thing it doesn't do is if you are, say, applying the brake um, and spinning the wheels at the same time. So, you know, your rear wheels would be going because it's a rear wheel drive car, uh, but your front brakes would be on, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you'd have to hand animate. It's not going to work with the spline. But um, uh, we also have a little drift control, which is kind of cool. Um, so that basically allows you to offset you know, the front rotation. The wheels will respect where they're originally told to go off the spline um, or this controller. So you can 
get some drifting going there. Here's the body roll control. It's maybe a little extreme. Um, that's also based on expression, so though this is limited, you know, within this bounding box, we've got some limit controllers on there. Uh, you can go into the expression after the fact, after you've keyed it, because this isn't happening, um, you know, automatically, this whole little rock forward and, and that stuff is all keyframes. Um, but you could script that. Uh, but anyway, right now it's it's a controller, a uh, limited controller that has on the multiplier, in this case, uh, divider. Um, and you can divide it by a value to basically lessen or increase uh, the amount of roll. So when you push it all the way, that roll would change. Uh, let's go in the top viewport, take a look at the actual spline control that is driving this. Let's see, so here's our car, here's our controllers, um, and it's pretty straightforward, pretty responsive, quick, just follows the spline. There is a little trick going on with the steering if we hide the, the car and turn on our helpers here. That we have um, three helpers going along. So there's one that, well, two that have path constraints applied uh, and follow this path. <coughs> like that. Um, this one this one is just over the back wheels. The one on the right here is over the front wheels and that represents um, an offset in time. We'll just move the keyframes forward uh, and instance them. And you basically create an offset so that these will always remain ahead by a certain number of frames of your original helper here. And then you have <coughs> this guy in the middle which is basically just a look at constraint point helper we look at constraint that is looking at this helper here and that is informing the wheels uh, front wheels where to turn so again, if we look here get at the crest of that turn you can see the arrow here <coughs> is pointing along the path um, and that happens as you go into the turn so here it's straight come up turn straightens out again if we continued, it would shift and turn that way. And that's independent of um, the wheel rotation, but you can also see that, you know, that, well, actually, no, you can't, not with these. Turn the car back on. <coughs> uh, with that set up, this rotation is separate from the wheel rotation, obviously, so that you can roll your wheels and turn at the same time, um, all being based off of that spline. Uh, the only thing is if you affect the spline too much, change the length of it, you'd have to go back into the expression um, and let the wheels know what that actual length is so that your distances aren't, aren't incorrect. But you can get away with quite a bit before that happens. Um, so again, all that real quick, real responsive. But that's basically it.